I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to the show. I'm Suzanne Lynn. And if you love contemporary romance, you are going to love the book Awake in Elysian Fields. It's book three of the Hearts Drawn Wild trilogy. Uh, I would want to introduce you to author Victoria J. Hyla. Hello, Victoria. Hi. Glad that you're Hi. here. Thanks, Suzanne. <laughs> Let's talk about the overall message of the book, Victoria. Well, um, this is, again, the, it's the end cap to this uh, trilogy that I've written. But this one really um, is about love and finding yourself and also dealing with the darkness of the world and coming out on top. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, a lot of things are thrown at the main character, Elise, and um, it's how she deals with them that kind of drive the story and um, dealing with her past and looking toward her future. So it's kind of about hope and we can yeah. all find, find common ground with that needing that right now. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's, I'm um, going through dark times doesn't make you need to make you a dark person. And that's kind of um, that part in it. Um, Cause I mean, I've personally in my life, I've been through some dark stuff, but I've managed to come out on top through my life. And so that the character kind of goes through that kind of arc as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff is thrown at her just, um, all kinds of darkness and she manages to come out smiling and making the best out of that situation. I I'm so stealing what you just said. When you go through <laughs> dark times, you don't have to come out a dark person. Yeah. I mean, wow. It's all attitude, isn't it? It is. It is. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about colors and darkness and everything, I noticed that the, the trilogy, the book covers have a real symbolic meaning as far as the color scheme that you went with. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I started, um, the first book is is a very dark blue and it has a black um, back cover. Um, and the middle one is kind of a forest green and has some bright yellows in it. And this um, last one is kind of pale colors. It's the Parisian colors. It takes place in Paris, but it's, um, it's pale pastels, but also on the lighter white side. Um, mm. And that's really significant, like you were um, noting that, because the first one, it's reality light she doesn't really have to deal with much on her reality side but the emotional content is super dark so mm -hmm. i went kind of that way um and then in the second book um the emotional and the reality darkness is pretty much on par um she's coming out of some more darkness in her emotional side but she's also dealing with dark realities and then this last one uh, really her emotional arc is less dark and heavy but the darkness in the real world is kind of the prominent piece. So it's the darkest in reality, but the lightest in emotion. So okay. it's kind of a, a weird kind of crossing path. So, so yeah. you know, as a reader, I want to instantly just jump right to the positive, right to the right to the third book. Do you, <laughs> do you need to go through the trilogy to understand it, or is this kind of a standalone? Um, you, it's helpful to read the trilogy and I would hope people do. Um, but yes, this third book, it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this third book is its own unique piece. Um, mm -hmm. it is a separate character from the first two. So the first two, the main character's name is Brianna and the first two kind of follow hers. Um, but this third one is a character called Elise who is mentioned in the first book, becomes a character in the second book. And it's basically her story going forward. And I've explained enough in this third book that you could just read this third book. Um, okay. But again, it is the darkest in reality. So it's not all happy and rose. <laughs> so. How do people relate with Elise? How are they going to find themselves, the little pieces of themselves in her? Well, I, I would hope that if you've had any kind of emotional trauma, whether it's from your parents or just from, um, and in her case, um, some traumatic sexual experiences as well, um, just knowing that you can come out of that and it doesn't have to define you. Um, and it is important for her. It's important on finding out more about her mother and knowing about where her mother came from. Um, her mother died when she was a child, five or six years old. And so she has this idea, but she doesn't really know who her mother is. So it's basically, it's, it's, if you have any of that darkness, how do you process that? And how can you make yourself into a, 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 the person you want to be? So, yeah. So your friends kind of had a hand in this also when it comes to, you've got some artist friends. Talk about yes. that. Yeah. I love including artists um, in my work and I always, um, well, my, my main character, my first two books is, an artist and the main character in this third book is a photographer so um i really love to integrate art and then the love interest in the third book is also an artist and it's a different art style from what i've done in the first two books so i have a lot of friends who are artists um professionally 
and they have donated their work for this book. Um, wow. in, yeah, in the third book, um, there's two abstract pieces that my friend April, her name's April Dippy, um, she did for me. Well, she just did them and I said, hey, I love this, can I use this? And she's like, absolutely. So, <laughs> and I helped out her. And then my, my tattoo artist, actually, there's a tattoo uh, drawing for them at the end of the book that's really significant to the themes. And I just, I, I gave him the description and I said, hey, can you sketch something for me? And then he made it even better. And so then I changed my description and it was very collaborative. That yeah. is so neat that you didn't set out to write a trilogy. No, I did not. No, I really only wrote the first book and then I felt like the second book had to be done. And then my dad was like, well, a trilogy sells better than two. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay now, I have to write a third. <laughs> now I have to write a third. Um, and it took me about six or seven years to be the person I needed to be to write this last book. Mm. So I did take a little hi hiatus because I got married and had kids and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Do you feel like your writing changed after you, you moved from kind of, um, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say childhood, but into adulthood, man, marriage and, and children. Yeah, that'll grow you up real fast. <laughs> Absolutely. And it did. It did. It, there's a lot more um, substance to it. I mean, the other I've read I read through the other two as I was finishing up the third one. And I'm I was still happy with the stories, but the characters are a lot more naive. The mm -hmm. characters um, have a lot more. Uh, they don't need to think about reality, basically, because mm -hmm. um, they're they're a lot on the younger side. Um, and not that these characters are older, but it's just they're dealing with more into the world. But yeah, absolutely. Real I've life. become more symbolic. I've become more yeah. integrative. And, um, and writing nasty characters are so much fun. And I had some really <laughs> nasty ones in this third book. <laughs> so the soft side of you enjoys poetry, too. Let's talk about what you're doing for your friends. Absolutely. So my friend Lisa Gullo, um, she passed from suicide about a year and a half ago, and yeah. she was a prolific. She was a prolific poet, but she never published her work. She was so scared to show her work to everybody. Um, but once and when she passed, um, I asked her husband um, if I could have access to her poetry and do something with it. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, and so, but as I got through her poetry, it's basically a journal chronicling her life. Um, and her life involved um, child abuse of herself um, and then just chronic migraine pain and depression and all kinds of things, but also her journey into faith. And so it's this beautiful journal of her life and her mental state because she felt like she could be honest in her poetry. Um, I wrote the introduction, so it is kind of my creation as well. Um, and I kind of synthesize her themes and all that. Um, but I am so happy to be bringing that to the world. And I'm hoping that it can help people understand they're not alone and that there is hope. So. Wow. Wow. So yeah. we're going to put the link where we can find more information about your book. Um, how can people find out more about the poetry? The poetry um, right now, it's going to be on my website, which is um, Victoria J. Hyla, H-Y-L-A dot com. It's my website. Um, and I'll be promoting that through Facebook and all over the place. Um, but I'll have the main links on my website for right now. So. Victoria, what is next for you? Um, after getting this poetry book out, um, I just um, became a, a high executive in a publishing company. Wow! <laughs> so I am I am publishing actually a children's book. Um, it's called Bartleby the Brave, and um, the text is done, and it's with the illustrator right now. So that's my next publication, um, and then I'm also planning a new trilogy. Um, in a new world with new characters. And this one is set, set in Mexico. Um, and actually the starting point is actually my life. Um, so it's a little close to home, which is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> so but w once they get to Mexico for real, it is complete fiction, I will assure you. <laughs> but um, yeah, the starting point is okay. basically where I was at one point in my life and the what if, what could have been kind of deal. Victoria, thank you so much for joining us. I wish we had more time. I know. Have a great one. I'm sure we'll check back in with you for the next trilogy. All right. Thank you so much, right. Suzanne.